All right, so oh. my presentation is America before Europeans, a.k.a. Native Americans. Awesome. So, yeah. Okay. There's a preconceived notion that America before the Europeans arrived was empty, unclaimed, wild, ripe for the taking. But that's really incorrect. Uh, Native Americans were much more numerous than previously thought, and they had very intricate cultures. Uh, so, first off, when did Native Americans come to the Americas? Common estimates put it at around 15,000 years ago. That's debated. We still don't know whether they crossed by land bridge or boat. There's actually evidence that they came by boat, possibly through, uh, like, Australia. <laughs> but, um, in any case, all Native Americans shared three genetic markers. And it indicates that they all came from three women. Uh, over the course of three different migrations, from 15,000 BC to about 5,000 BC. So, let's start off with the Aztec. The Aztec, their capital city was Tenochtitlan. It was the largest city in the world at the time. Uh, and it was built on completely artificial land. They went out into the middle of a lake and hauled in thousands upon thousands of pounds of dirt and made a city <laughs> in the middle of a lake. It was planned out in advance, uh, had a square grid pattern, it was about 5.2 square miles, and it was only 200 years old when the Spaniards came. And its population estimates vary from about 200,000 to over a million. So we don't know exactly how large it was, but it was by far the largest city in the world at the time and the most complex. In addition, the empire, the Aztec Empire, which only spans southern Mexico and Central uh, America, had over 15 million people. So, artist rendition of Tenochtitlan. As you can see, they used canals instead of streets, and they actually had floating farms on the outside. Uh, a lot of it was actually floating and not anchored down in Like Minecraft. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> they built mobile islands for farms. <coughs> There's a ton of misconceptions about the Aztec. Uh, one of them is that they didn't have the wheel. For whatever reason, they were so primitive that they did not develop the wheel. That's simply not true. They had them on tons of toys that we have found. It's just Wheels weren't practical for them. Think about it. You're in the middle of the jungle, mud's everywhere. How useful is a cart going to be? You'd rather have a sledge. So they just didn't use wheels. Uh, there's also the preconceived notion that they were incredibly bloodthirsty. And yes, they sacrificed a lot of people. But most of these people that they sacrificed were prisoners of war. They designed their warfare so that they wouldn't actually kill people on the battlefield. They just knock them out with a club, drag them back, and later sacrifice them at the temple. And they were actually really well treated up until they were sacrificed. <laughs> and it was actually considered a great honor to be sacrificed. People would actually volunteer to be sacrificed because they believed that their blood fed the gods and would keep the world on spinning. And as far as they were concerned, Look, we sacrificed all these people yesterday, the world's not over today, must have worked. <laughs> also comparatively, the Europeans killed just as many people in witch hunts and wars. So, it wasn't as bad. <laughs> and also in context, sacrifice was central to their culture. Most of their gods had sacrificed a piece of themselves in order to preserve the Aztec in their mythology. So they thought of sacrifice as the greatest thing you could possibly do. I agree. <laughs> they all had a bit of a good Jesus complex, which is interesting. Uh, now, since this is a quick talk, we're just going to jump right on up to North America. Uh, the Haudenosaunee, which are commonly known as, who are commonly known as Iroquois, uh, had an extensive trade network. Well, all Native Americans had an extensive trade work in North America, where their trade network spanned coast to coast and all the way down to South America. We found shells from Central America in New York. So this means that they had a massive trade work. 
train of Virgos are. And fun fact about the Hoda and the Sun Lamp, they were matrilineal. Uh, inheritance was passed on through the mother, and their chiefs were male. But the chief's sister was the one who chose the successor, and at any time the chief could be ousted by a council of elders who were all female. So that's interesting. Especially counteracts a lot of the arguments that no major cultures have had for matrilineal. Okay. Now we're going to move on over to uh, Illinois and Cahokia. Uh, it was the largest city in the world at the time, 1200 AD. It was founded in about 600 AD, and it was massive for its time. Um, in fact, no city in the United States reached the size of Cahokia until mid-1800s. I think I have a It, was, it ended up having about a population of 15,000 with more people in the farming villages right outside of it. The, city of the, the size of the city proper was about six square miles. And the interesting thing about this city was it was built with over 120 mounds. Now these were earthenwork mounds and they were made up of over 55 million cubic feet of dirt. Uh, this would have taken hundreds of years of just hauling the dirt basket by basket and making these mounds. A giant public work project, which indicates a highly intricate government if you can have a public works project on this scale. Um, the largest mound is Monk's Mound. It's over 14 square acres, 100 feet tall, and it was topped with a 50-foot structure. There's an image of Monk's Mound. Uh, you can still go to it today, and from the top of Monk's Mound, you can see St. Louis right across the river. Random awesome facts. There is no wild equivalent of corn. Corn, maize, was genetically engineered from Teosinte. They breeded it, they bleh. <laughs> they bred it over the course of many, many years, and, they, and it is arguably the most advanced example of domestic breeding. They took it from a wild grass that doesn't really look much like corn to over 100 varieties of maize. Fun fact about the population of pre-Columbian Americas. Initial estimates put out about 10 million for the entire continents. Well, we know that that one was really off because the Aztecs had 15 million. And nowadays historians are pushing for conservative estimates of 100 million people before Columbus landed, and a lot of people say that could be double or triple. We are uncertain. Uh, however, there are European accounts that say you could sail up the eastern coast of the United States, and at any point, you could see three villages on the horizon. So, obviously a lot more dense than previously thought. And, who killed the Native Americans? It was largely pigs. <laughs> um, pigs would escape the settlers, or Columbus, uh, Columbus uh, Cortez, they all brought pigs with them, because pigs are an excellent source of food. And, they get out. And pigs carry disease like very few other animals. <coughs> so the escaped pigs also did very well in the wild. They didn't have that many predators. Predators are typically smaller. And they did very well. And they flourished, moved through, and came in contact with Native Americans. Those Native Americans would fall ill, but before they did, because of the trade network, it would get spread across tribes. And oftentimes, entire villages would be wiped out before the Europeans even reached them. Europeans actually have reports of, you know, walking into this fresh new land and walking through deserted villages, through deserted villages. Um, it's estimated that about 80% of the populations of the Americans, of the Americas died to disease. 80% to 90% actually. Uh, so that's just a quick blurb. Um, I recommend the book 1491 by Charles C. Mann. It goes into a lot of what I said in obviously much more depth and, and examines a bunch of other cultures. And it is it is biased, it's got a fairly anti-European view, but it's very interesting and references all its information. Well, so you can find out more. Thank you. <laughs>